So you get the little message coming through now. Perfect. Okay, so just to a um, couple of housekeeping things to start off with. We will be recording the AGM and then we'll stop the recording and we'll record the uh, Bob Gilbert's talk afterwards. And they're both of those recordings will get uploaded to YouTube. Um, we'll, we will have some polls and some votes. Um, the votes, the voting for officers and other things that are uh, LNHS business, you can't actually vote if you're not a member. So there's going to be always an option for not an LNHS member. You can vote, it doesn't matter which section of the LNHS you're in, but you do need to be a member to actually take part in the voting. But you're most welcome to it to be here. If you're not an LNHS member, you can kind of see what we've been up to as well. So we're going to start off um, before we even launch onto the agenda with a poll just to check who's actually here this evening. So Kieran, are you okay to launch that one? So just to let us know, um, so we get a sense about who the audience is, that's helpful for us. Okay, so are you a member? Are you a trustee, a member of the council? Or are you somebody that's visiting? So we'll just give you a little bit of time to lock that. It's nice we've got a mixture of I've got quite a lot of members, which is great, and some, uh, some trustees that are here and visitors as well. So it's perfect. Okay, I think that's most people that have taken part. So if we can stop that, that now, that's great. We don't particularly, actually, we do need to know how many members are here. So are you all right just to read that through, Kieran, just so we've got the numbers? Yeah, that's no problem. I mean, it will change as the meeting goes on. But when we did the poll, we had 37 yeah. members, five trustees, 12 visitors. And I'll just mention now, so we don't forget, Maria, that when we do business polls later on we'll be adding five votes for for each of them because the, there's five people that are co-hosts on the meeting and they because of that they can't vote in the poll and we've all agreed that we're in favor of everything that's been voted on this evening that's perfect thank you get rid of that so we're going to now go on to hopefully yeah to the so this is the agenda um, we're going to work through it in a kind of systematic way. Um, so we're going to start off with welcome. So I've already got a little welcome, but welcome again. Um, my name is Maria Roberts. I'm one of the vice presidents of the LNHS, and I'm going to be chairing tonight's meeting. We've had a few apologies so far. So um, the apologies I know about are from, Ma and I've got the names jot jotted down. So they're from Mavis Pillbeam, Marion Hill, Joe Maddox and Cecilia Derrick. Does anybody have any other apologies? What, one more from Eric Clement. Thank you. Thanks, George. Okay. One so, more. Uh, one more informal apology. I, she hasn't uh, submitted it formally, but I, um, it's unlikely that Lydia Gallia um, Barnett will be able to attend. She was got something else this evening. She would like to have been here. All oh, right. Oh, okay. That's th thanks for letting us know. And we'll into yeah we'll say a little bit more about her uh, shortly. So um, thank you for that. And then item two on the agenda is to confirm the minutes of the annual general meeting that was held on the eighth of December, twenty twenty two. Members should have had those a copy of those minutes come through with the newsletter. Um, it was, there are also copies on the website. So hopefully everybody's had a, who attended that meeting has had a chance to have a look at those. Um, and so we're just basically checking if there are any amendments that people um, would like to bring up, you're most welcome to. So I'll just hang on um, for a second to see whether anybody has got any changes they thought needed to be made to those. Just pop your hand up if there's anything that you want to, want to comment on. Okay, I can't hear anything. So I'm assuming we're kind of happy with those. So what we need to do is we need to have a poll to actually confirm those minutes and for that we need a proposer and we need a seconder so who would like to propose the acceptance of those minutes i can propose liz andrew and second uh tony magic i'll second that lovely and if we can launch that poll and we'll just give you a little bit of time to pop your vote on there Still a couple more people voting, I think. So I'll just give you 10 more seconds or so. 
we're all getting very good at Zoom polls now. <laughs> Perfect. So I think we can end that poll now. And yeah, so for the purpose of the minutes, we've got 53 accept, zero object, and two abstentions. We won't be reading out the not an LHS member numbers because we don't need to minute them. So yeah. um, hopefully our meeting minute has got all of that. Okay, so that's fine. So those are approved. So the next thing we move on to is to talk or start think, talk, talking about two important, um, we've got two important people that carry out important roles as officers. One does an annual report, that's our secretary, and one will give us a financial update, that's our current treasurer. So I think I maybe need to do I move on. Yeah, so this is the review of the year. And I think, um, Annie, you're going to speak to this? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to keep it really short because uh, we don't want things to drag on. So 2022-23 um, saw a return to business as usual for the society with a strong offering of field meetings and virtual talks alongside our regular society publications. Um, I've put a lot of names and stuff on the screen, but I'm not going to talk through those. What I really want to say is we are very, very grateful to our huge army of volunteers who make the society what it is. Uh, we have people doing walk leading and guest speakers and recorders and species experts and our writers, and our editors, and the society officers and committees all supported by the back office crew who keep things going. So without the generosity and commitment of these people, the society would not exist. And of course, we're very pleased that our members continue to support us and make it all worthwhile. Um, and I just want to make the normal plea. There are um, plenty of opportunities for members to get involved in all areas of the society. Um, so you don't need to have any special skills. You just need to be interested in nature and enjoy working with people of a similar mindset. So we're always pleased to accept new volunteers. We've had a few people respond to our recent calls, but there's plenty of scope for more people. So if, you, if you're interested in joining, getting on board, please do contact me, um, because we're always looking for people to help keep things going. And that's all I'm gonna say. So over to, back to Maria. Thank you very much, Annie. That's really great. Thank you for all your kind of hard work um, for putting together with the report, but also all the other work that you've done for the society over the year as well. And we are very, very grateful. We wouldn't have a society if we didn't have all these wonderful people that volunteer. So what we need to do now is our next vote is to accept the annual report. So again, hopefully everybody's had a chance to read through that. Um, again, we need somebody to propose the receiving of the annual report. Do we have? Is that Cat? Yeah, Cat Duke. Thanks. Thank you. And a seconder. Uh, Kieran. Kieran, that's fine. And so if we can launch that poll now. That'd be great. Okay, so it should have appeared for everybody. And as per the other vote, there's an option to accept it, object to it, abstain, or um, if you're not an LNHS member, you shouldn't vote on the site of business. So select the option that says not an LNHS member. Uh, as previously stated, I'm going to add five to the accept because five people that are co-hosts on the meeting have pre-agreed. I think most people have got their vote and I'll just give you a couple more seconds. Yeah, okay. Right, okay. So for the purpose of the minutes, we've got 55 have accepted it zero have objected and two have abstained okay back to you maria thank you that's great so um the next part of the meeting is about to receive the statement of financial activities so i'm going to hand over now to mike west our current treasurer thank you uh thank you everybody um you will all have received in the pack um six pages or so of professionally produced accounts what I'm talking to now is the sheet on on your screen, the summarised accounts, which which uh, is which is made up of figures that are in the big in the big document overall. 
Um, the good news is that our assets at the end of the year are up on what they were at the beginning of the year. Um, the bad news is that it's not quite up as much as we might have hoped. Um, if you look at in, in the, the biggest item of receipts was a, a single bequest from uh, Keith Hyatt's estate. Keith Hyatt, the um, tremendously uh, long serving editor of the London Naturalist, um, left £26,000 odd to the LNHS to um, spend on the publication of research of members. And that will be kept for publications and so on and the like in the future. Now, we received 26,000 from him. We invested 20,000 of that straight away. Uh, but overall, the value of our investments isn't 20,000 pounds more than it was at the beginning of the year. So the underlying value of the investments has slumped a little bit. But um, looking towards the other aspects of the receipts, um, subscriptions are holding up pretty well. Um, quite a few members, we think, joined the society during the lockdown when they were uh, in enticed by the fantastic programme of virtual talks that Maria and co set up. And they've held pretty well. So just a few percent down on last year. Donations a little bit down, but not much. Um, the grant uh, receipt is the remainder of the City of London Corporation receipt for uh, uh, research work on the floor of Hampstead Heath. That's, that fund can only be spent on that. Gift aid is a little bit better than last year. Investment income is a bit up because we'd invested some of Keith, uh, Keith Hyatt's money. Going down uh, the, the, on the payment side, um, the London Naturalist was a little bit cheaper than the previous year, as, as was indeed the London Bird Report. Uh, they're both stunningly good publications. The newsletter and the mailing figures um, look gruesomely up a bit on the previous year, but that's skewed slightly because our accounts are prepared on the receipts and payments basis as these as the monies go through. And um, in the previous year, we only actually paid for three newsletters and their mailings within the 12 month period. So although the figures for newsletter uh, are up on the previous year and the figures for mailing considerably up on the previous year, um, it's not quite as bad as it shows there. But uh, the cost overall, especially of the mailing of the newsletters um, and indeed the nature of the publication of the newsletter is something that is being looked at now to see if we can get options that are still meet the needs of members but are a bit more frugal in terms of our expense. Um, Library and services. Uh, um, library. We didn't spend too much during the during the, the the last year, but we're catching up a bit on some of the backlog of books that have been published then. Now, services. Those are things like the um, the uh, accounting and insurance. Um, both those have gone up a little bit, uh, and in aggregate, we've spent you know seven hundred pounds more than the previous year. The Hampstead money we've spent out, that's 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 money that came in from the City of London Corporation. Investment purchases are, you know, the bulk of Keith Hyatt's bequest. So if anybody's got any question on those figures or on the longer version that we circulated with the pack, I'll do my best to answer. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, if any, if you just pop your hand up or pop a question into the chat. If there's anything that you would like to ask about those, we'll just give uh, people a little bit of time in case anybody has got any questions. No. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> we just uh, didn't want to skip over. Sorry, just... sorry. Oh, yeah. I, didn't, I couldn't get my hand up. Um, okay. Can I just ask a question about, you've got investment purchases of 20,000. But I thought the increase in investment would have been in the investment um, asset uh, category. Um, well, we, we 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 because we paid for we paid for the purchase of the investments out of our bank account. It has to show in these receipts and payments accounts. Um, but actually, if you look at what happened at the by the end of the year, we, we started with three hundred and fourteen thousand, and it hasn't gone up by twenty thousand. It's only gone up by about ten thousand. So, so the twenty thousand is down in the payment section and not well, in the investment section. None of well, the twenty thousand. No, no, it, 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 the investment is the is the worth of the, the value of the investment at the end of the year. So the, okay. the, the beginning of the year we started with nearly the three hundred fourteen odd thousand. Uh -huh. Okay, the, that's that's the value thereof. Um, okay. Um, and then the the value the value dropped a bit during the year, and although we put twenty thousand in. The total value of the, of the investment at the end of the year isn't twenty thousand more than it had been at the beginning. It's about well, about ten thousand, because because the, the the worth of the investments, which are in in investment investment funds with M and G and with um, uh, CCLA, 
um, haven't maintained in, 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 in unit terms their value quite. Okay. All right. All right. Thank okay. you. It's fine. Thanks. That's, thanks. That's great, Kathy. Good to ask questions. Um, I'm going to leave that. I think we've probably not got any other comments. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for, again, for all your hard work on those. And it's great to see about, you know, how, we, you know, we're pretty healthy in terms of our kind of funds at the moment. And as Mike just for me briefly mentioned we are looking at the kind of issue of postage and pr printing and thinking about some possible solutions to that that members will soon enjoy but where we might be able to save some money or put some money to something else okay so we're going to now um have the vote to accept those counts um and again we'll need a proposer for that i'll propose anka Thanks, Anka. And um, we need a seconder. I'll second Kennedy Cruikshank. That's great. Okay, and then we can launch that poll. Thank you. Yeah, so for anyone just joining us, there's a poll launch, launched to adopt the financial statement for the period of 1st of July 22 to 30th of June 23. Uh, the options are to accept it, object, abstain, or if you're not an LNHS member, please select the not an LNHS member. Uh, just go only LNHS members can vote on society business. Uh, the votes are flying in Maria, so I'm not going to keep it open too much longer. Okay. Yep. Last um, chance if you would like to. I think there's a, there's a few people that haven't. You don't have to, but just give you maybe yeah. 10 more seconds and then we'll close it. Yeah. And just for anybody that's just joined, there will be five votes added to accept because there are a number of trustees that are not able to vote in the polls because they're hosting the um the session okay so for the purpose of the minutes we've got 55 accept zero object and two abstention back to you maria that's great thank you okay so thank you very much again to mike for all your work and i'm sure we're going to say a little bit more about you in a in a little while <laughs> Uh, yeah, our next part of the um, business is to start thinking about the elections of the members of council and then of officers. We're going to do it that way around, so I hope that people are happy with that. So first of all, we're electing, these are the basically the people who are members, trustees, uh, members of the council who are elected by the membership. There are some people who are elected to represent the sections, but we also have up to 10 people who represent the membership as a whole. So we're going to basically we're going to vote on those. Um, I'm sure these are people that most of you will be familiar with. Um, I'll read out the names um, and then we'll do the poll. So we've got Jan Hewlett, Ian Woodward, Robin Blades, Wendy Knight, Joe Maddox, Pete Mantle and Noel Brock. We do have three vacant, that still leaves us with three vacancies on council. We'd be most happy if, you know, that's something that people are interested in. It is possible to co-opt somebody during the course of the year as well. So do get in touch if you'd like to get involved in the running, helping to run the, the, helping to run the society as a member of council. Uh, Gahan, I can see your hands up. Um, just querying Noel Brock, is that a type or is that Noel Frognon? No, I think that is his name, but he, oh, okay. his company, I think, is called Frognor. Oh, right. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So he may appear as a on his email as Noel Frognor. Okay, but that's fine. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is his actual surname. Yeah, but yeah, but anyway, we know, we yeah. know whom we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's good. I'm glad you're kind of keeping an eagle eye on things. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, Gahan. Okay, so if we can... Yeah, we need, I think we need, yeah, we do need a proposer and a seconder for those. So I'm happy to propose these people. If there's a seconder. Tony, I'm Michael. Yeah. Tony, a second. Okay, I'll take that as Tony. So if we can launch that poll now, please. Um, you'll need to scroll down this one because we've got all seven people on the same poll. So it, it means making sure you get kind of right down to the bottom. That's perfect. And we'll give you a little bit longer for this as well because there's seven separate sort of votes. Thank you. Yeah, I think it won't let you submit your votes until you've selected one on each question as well. So the options are for, against, abstain, or if you're not an LNHS member, 
select not an LNHS member. Um, and those that are nominated, you can vote for yourself. There's no rule against that. So you are you don't have to abstain when voting. Yeah, that's for a good yourself. point to, to make here. And yeah, you are you are able to do that. Okay, so that's yeah, there's still people. There's still numbers. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer. It's gonna take a little one. bit, yeah. Okay, we'll give you a little bit of time. Um for anyone just joining now, the vote in front is for our elected member representatives of council. Um, when I read out the results, I'll be adding five in favour of each person uh, because there are five uh, five members that have already given their votes at the beginning because we can't actually vote in the polls because we're administering them. So I'm going to end it there, Maria. So I'll give people just one more sec to get their vote in if they haven't already. Right. Yes. Okay, so okay. I'll just read the results for the purpose of the minutes. So Jan Hewlett, we've got 52 for, zero against, one abstention. Uh, Ian Woodward, we've got 53 for, zero against, zero abstention. Robin Blades, we've got 53 for, zero against, zero abstention. Wendy Knight, we've got 52 for, zero against, one abstention. Joanne Maddox, we've got 53 for, zero against, zero abstention. Peter Mantle, 53 for, zero against, zero abstention. And Noel Brock, 53 for, zero against, zero abstention. Um, I've just noticed there's something in the chat. Is it relevant to... All right. No, it was, it's a private message to me. I'll sort that out. Back to you, Maria. OK, thank you very much. And I just want to say thank you so much to all the, the people who volunteer to be part of council, to be the trustees who helped to steer the society forward. We are, again, you know, we're grateful to all our volunteers, but particularly people who take on that responsibility. Um, I suppose I should just mention about that people serve do a term of five years. Um, or maximum of five years, then they need to stand down. Um, so we have had a couple of people that have stepped down and will obviously means that we get a sort of rotating membership. But do bear in mind the three vacancies because we will be, be, we'd love to fill those vacancies as well. So if you'd be interested in getting involved, do get in touch with us. So I'm moving forward. Okay, so the next part, um, my understanding is we've, we're going to vote on the officers. I'm going to talk about a little bit about those in a second. The council, we also have section representatives um, and they're listed there. But my understanding is we don't necessarily vote on those because they've been nominated by the sections. So this is just for information. So maybe I'll just tell you who those are because there was a message in the chat about them too. So the London Bird Club, Cecilia Derrick is taking over as the section rep for that part of the society. Maureen Parry is continuing as the Botany rep. Anka Marsh continuing as the Ecology and Entomology rep. Kat Duke as the Hampstead Heath Survey rep. And we still have a vacancy. I'll talk a little bit more about Book and Common in a bit, but we still have a vacancy, so we don't have any rep um, for that section. So now we need to talk about two important well three particularly important roles um we have three officers the president and unfortunately we still haven't um had anybody we we ran with the out president last year and we still haven't had anybody kind of coming forward to take that role on so that post will be again be vacant for next year uh, mike west has been the treasurer for a very 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 long time and he's just done such an amazing um job for the society and we are really sad that he is, after all those years, uh, stepping down. But we also entirely understand that it's his time for him to kind of go and do some other things and not to keep that responsibility. But we are really, really delighted that Lydia Gallia Barnett um, has stepped forward and said she will take on the treasurer role. Her and Mike are going to work together initially. So there's going to be a really smooth uh, handover, uh, really well organized transition period but we are just really delighted she couldn't make this evening's meeting otherwise we would have kind of said hello but we're really delighted that she's going to take that role on she's going to do a fantastic job 
um, Associate Vote Harid, of course. And uh, Annie Wilson has been doing, again, a, a really brilliant job as our secretary, and she's willing to stand again today. So we're going to have the next vote, which will be just for those two posts where we have nominations for the treasurer and for secretary. So again, we need somebody to propose those people. It's Maureen, I'll propose. Thanks, Maureen. And a seconder? Natalia, I'll second. Natalia, that's, that's fine. And if we can launch that, thank you. Yeah, so there should be two yeah. votes there since we've got no president nominees. Um, first one for Lydia and the second one for Annie. Uh, only LNHS members can vote, so the options are for, against, or abstain. abstain. Uh, anyone who's not an LNHS member should select the not a LNHS member option. Uh, for anybody just joining, we'll be adding five votes in favour of these two nominations, because there are five people on the call that, as admins of the call, cannot actually submit a vote using the Zoom poll system. Right, I think we've got most votes in. I'm just going to give you a couple more seconds to get them in. Yeah, we're not getting any more. That's it. Thank right, you. okay. Thank you. For the purpose of the minutes, for the treasurer, for Lydia, we've got 58 in favour of four. We've got zero against and zero abstentions. And for Annie Wilson as secretary, who has done a fantastic job over the past year, uh, unsurprisingly, we've got 58, 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions. Okay. All right. Back to you, Maria. Thank you. So I just let's see if we've got a slide. No, okay. I haven't got a slide for this. Okay. So now I'm going to hand back to Mike West, who's going to, we got, because our next um, job is to elect the independent examiner. So, Mike, can you just briefly yep. speak to that? Thank I you. Um, the independent examiner I'm going to propose is Ralph Sears of now Henton's Accountants. Uh, this is the same guy, but a different firm uh, from uh, previous last few years. Uh, the firm that he's he's with, Mayor Williams of Hartford, uh, have merged with a bigger national firm named Henton Henton's. Um, he knows how to make decent accounts out of um, the sort of stuff I can give him at the end of my year. And uh, the part of the deal with uh, with, with Lydia is that because of the sort of mis misphasing of the society's AGM and the society's business year, that I will I will be leading treasurership until the end of the financial year, which is at the end of June, and that I will then see the accounts for the year that I will then have completed through through the independent examiner. So um, uh, and then you know after that, Lydia may well find somebody who's nearer to her and more convenient, or may even be cheaper. Who knows? Uh, but I would like to propose Ralph Sears of Henton's in Hartford. Thank you, Mike, and I'm happy to second that. So if we'd like to put that to the vote. Oh, we're, before we before we announce the results of this, Kathy has raised her hand, oh, so okay, I think I we should hear that. Yep, so we'll leave the vote running while Kathy's hand is oh, raised. Oh, sorry, I, just, I didn't quite hear. It, you just, is the fee going to be the same going to a larger firm? Um, it, it, yes, pretty well. I mean, it went up a little bit this time, but the same, but he is a director, he is, he is a director of Henton's and it is likely to be about the same, but I haven't, I haven't been able to find anybody who is prepared to deal, prepared to do it for us, for anything less. And we've had a good deal from them, you know, for a number of years now. And, okay. uh, you know, it's, 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 okay, easy, that's, it's that's easy, easier for me and for him just to do, to do this final year of me. Um, yeah. and then maybe we can review after that. It's actually Henton's, H-E-N-T-O-N-S, but don't worry. Okay, thank you. I think if I can make a comment as well, I think I'd say changing the treasurer and the independent examiner in the same <laughs> year is a recipe. Probably not a great <laughs> idea, no. <laughs> yeah, but um, right. Uh, so yeah, for anyone who hasn't voted, we're voting on Henton's, not Henson's, as independent examiner. Uh, only NHS members can vote on this. The options are accept, object, or abstain. I'll be adding five votes in favour of this because five members have voted at the beginning because they can't vote uh, due to being admins on the call, right? I'll just give you a couple more seconds. Most people seem to have voted. Okay, no new votes coming in. So for the purpose of the minutes, we've got 61 in favour, zero objections, zero abstentions. Over to you, Maria. That's great, thank you. 
Um, can I just check if Michael Wilsden's available? Yes. Okay, yes, perfect. I'm here. So I'm going to hand over to you for the next part um, about the appointment of an honorary vice president. So uh, can I leave that with you? Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, thank you very, very much, Maria. Um, I just wanted to um, do a couple of words. This won't take particularly long. Um, luckily, because everybody's already been so nice about Mike West. Um, you will have gathered just then that there is a slight mismatch between the AGM and the accounting date. So actually, Mike is going to have to do a little bit more because technically he's the treasurer. And um, Lydia can then come in and join um, in a calm and reasoned way. And all I wanted to say was we've looked back and Mike has been treasurer for a very, very long time. And he deserves, put it mildly, when he goes to become an honorary vice president of the society. A few people have done anything like the amount of work he has done, or as well as the work being a quiet, intelligent and thoughtful person on umpteen committees, all of which raise questions that seem slightly difficult to answer, and he has managed quite brilliantly. I'll do just a couple of things, but two things of background, because I think, oddly enough, otherwise no doubt, He's just known as the, pres as the treasurer. Yes, he should have been president, actually, as I've often said to him. That was really what should have happened. Um, Mike, born in Portishead, when Portishead was not Bristol. So he comes from the West Country-ish and enjoyed his early years. Bit of natural history, bit of awareness. Um, and then, like many of us, finds himself working in London and wondering what interests he has. Now, I hadn't realised this. But for quite a few years, he was RSPB Central London organising field meetings and the rest. I actually, I was completely oblivious to his previous career in London. Um, then after a while, he wants to do something a bit more serious. So he joins LNHS. He goes on to Council of LNHS. And then when the previous treasurer, uh, Corinna Balfour, is offered a nice little job somewhere in Europe by the Bank of England, but only for a couple of years, and she says, oh, I'll be back soon. Well, no, that didn't quite work out that way. And Mike has always been the treasurer from ever when Corinna disappeared through Calais, never to be seen again in the wrong direction. So she was uh, expected back, didn't come back, and Mike has been treasurer ever since. And our praise and thanks very, very much to him. Occasionally, he says, oh, I don't do a lot of natural history and things like that. And I wish it back. Yeah, but... You have been to the Falklands. You have been to South Africa. You got kites over your house. You go to Amwell every winter. There's a lot of natural history quietly being done. Now, the final thing I was going to say was, well, I just found intriguing this one. For quite a while, Mike used to live in Admiralty Arch, uh, part of Ministry of Defence, Admiralty indeed. But of course, strictly speaking, that's the centre of the LNHS recording area because it's 20 miles from there, etc., etc. So I just wanted to say he's always been extremely central and that just proves it. He was actually living at the exact spot in the middle before moving out to, to Hartford, I, I admit. Um, so many, many thanks to Mike. The calm and very careful way that he's actually trying to cease being treasurer is to my mind the hallmark of many, many years of very, very sensible and helpful and wise looking after the society and it's been a pleasure working with him and I'm hoping for a, a few more months yet of that pleasure and becoming an honorary vice president on his part is sort of the least the society could do in many ways. So many, many thanks to you, Mike. And if there was an HVP well-deserved, well, that was certainly yourself. Thank you. Thank you, That's Marie. Very gracious, and thank you very much indeed. And I am delighted to accept saying thank you. <clears throat> it's been lovely working with everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Michael, to, for a really nice presentation about Mike. And thank you. I mean, words can't express really how grateful the LNHS is to you. And as Michael says, that's the least we, we, we would want to do for you. So congratulations for becoming honorary vice president and it's lovely that it's you're going to be around for a while um to kind of 
so you're not sort of disappearing off straight away. So we've got you around for a little bit longer, which is lovely. Okay, so thank you very much. What we're going to move on to now is to talk about the different sections and each section is just going to give us a short report about what they've been up to during the course of the year. Um, so we're going to start off with Leslie Bolsover um, speaking to the LNHS library. Um, and if Leslie, just let me know when you want me to move slides across and I'll move them for you. So I'll just move to your first slide. Okay, thank you, Maria. Um, the collection at the um, LNH library, if you haven't ever visited before, there are approximately 4,000 books plus journals. There are complete runs of the LNHS publications. And um, there are a mix of general reading books on nature subjects, books for practical identification of specimens, and also some very important gray literature and reports. So gray literature are um, reports, not commercial reports, but in-depth reports about specific subjects or areas. So this last category is probably contains some rare or unique literature needed for, possibly needed for research later. So it is an important collection. So over the year, the library committee restarted meetings in October, 2023, after a hiatus during lockdown. Um, another meeting is scheduled for January, 2024. During the October meeting, it was decided to begin purchasing new books again. And there was a review of books that are uh, marked missing from the library. So books that have um, not come back to the library when they should. Um, nine new titles were are now available on the shelf. And by last week, by the last week in October, but so far, none of them have been borrowed by users. So lack of usage by members and um, visits by other people uh, who'd like to research is the overriding uh, feature at the moment in the LNHS library. So we've got some new volunteers coming in to help out. Everyone there volunteering is new to the job and to the collection. And we're new to how it's being used by LNHS members and the public. So I joined in the end of February, 2023, and I was very well trained by Julie Burke, who decided to step back in spring. James Lively then stepped forward to help and has now been trained. He has an ID and a password to the Natural History Museum computing system, and he can now work there on his own. So making two of us able to do so. So James is kindly manning the library during the Angela Mormont Center's monthly third Saturday opening and he, he'll be there in attendance in the afternoon. Recently, Ron Dion has begun volunteering as well, and that makes three of us. So um, I'm busy updating the library manual to help enable new or even casual volunteers to get quickly up to speed with the library procedures, which are very simple. Um, so we've got some new ideas uh, to try to improve usage of the resources that we've got. I've extended the initial loan period to 60 days as most members do not leave, live very close to the uh, Natural History Museum. It seems right to have longer loan periods so that members feel less pressure when they're borrowing items from the library. Also, we now take email details so that members can be contacted about their overdue loans and a renewal option um, is available to them on the return of that email. So it's all very easy for them. We will now loan journals to members. Um, LNHS spends funds on journal subscriptions, although the journals in the library seem less used than the book collection. If members, especially younger members, would like to read issues of journals, they can borrow those as well. We have started purchasing multiple copies of guidebooks for use during courses. Um, we are closely monitoring usage to combat occasional um, missing books, thefts or missing books. So we've got new users. Um, the library, as I said, is very underused, but the few who do take advantage of the resource come back repeatedly. Uh, we have one or two new young members who have found the library now and are regularly visiting. Um, from last year's report, I could see that we had 25 loans and this year the total is um, double that at, at 50. 
However, the number of users active is only 11 out of the approximately sort of 980 LNHS members. So um, everybody who does come to the library seems to enjoy it and appreciate it, but we don't have a lot of members coming in. So um, we should mention the successful book sale, uh, thanks to Julie Burke and I believe Liz, Liz Andrews and a number of useful, very useful um, donations coming in. Um, I've just taken um, possession of an almost complete set of new naturalists, which will um, fill out the collection that we already have, where we have gaps and some damaged books. And this came from Dr. Graham Kern, who is a parasitologist at the University of East Anglia. Over this year, while I've been there, <clears throat> the library has been used for some very interesting research projects, including someone who is um, researching Spanish raptors, um, a lady researching kingfishers on the Thames, various London botany projects, the Hampstead Heath bird list um, project, and general entomology. So it's all very good stuff, but not uh, as well used as we would like. Um, if you want to see the next slide, Maria. So you can just get a, a, a look at the, the stats there. Um, we have new books, donations, but very few active patrons and um, very few books out of the 4,000 on loan at any one time. So the all loans column is what I could piece together all loans since the library moved to the Angela Mormont Center in, in 2013, but it may not be very accurate because I don't have all the full information. So um, come on down if you'd like to explore and we'd be happy to help you in the library. Thank you. That's great, Leslie. And uh, it's great that we've you've now got three people you know you and you and the yeah. team of volunteers i'm really pleased with that so that's um you know that, and also that we're able to start restart the saturday openings as well so that's fantastic because obviously for people that work midweek is quite tricky so it's really nice yeah. to be able to opt for that as an option as well thank you for all your kind of enthusiasm and your hard work and yeah we just need to get more people go in there so please you know do come and do come and visit and if you know other members that um if you're kind of here today but you know other members that might be interested you know please do encourage people to come and have, have a look and it's really good the idea about lending journals out as well they're mm. you know, expensive for subscriptions so offering that as an option for people who perhaps can't necessarily afford to take out the subscription themselves for just for all for the price of one annual membership it's a really good bargain so yeah. yes yeah so let's keep monitoring that and um, I'm, I'm sure you've got lots of good ideas but also you know uh, the more we can kind of get people coming along it's a you know it's a resource that we all kind of really value but it needs to be used by the membership to keep it going so thank you for that and I'm going to go on now to the that's going to be me um, just a quick, very quick chat about the virtual natural history talks and how that's been going so just to say, um, again, we've had another kind of successful year running the virtual talks. Thanks to everybody. All the speakers have agreed to give the online talks. We're really grateful to them. They've all given their time freely and they've all shared their expertise. And basically, we would not have a programme without their generosity. So thank you to all of those. We're very, very grateful. The sessions continue to be popular. We get around 150 people attending most of the talks now live on Zoom. And then other people watch the recordings on the YouTube channel afterwards. That's now got over 100 videos. And if it's not a resource that you've explored, it is just a wonderful resource now for natural history in itself. So do kind of have a look at it. And it's open to everybody. Um, it's on a public YouTube channel. So invite people to come and explore as well. Um, so we're just running on the um, June to June year, which is always slightly confusing because then we're in December, but just sticking to July to June 2023. We've had monthly talks on a whole range of natural history subjects, microfossils, the bats of Jamaica, gardening for wildlife, rocky shore ecology, saving Britain's curlews, managing the city for nature during climate instability, the London Wetlands Centre, bees and garden plants, marine mammals in the Thames, the marine world, the restoration of Hainaut 
forest and the wood that built London. So a really lovely range. Um, the audiences are engaged, enthusiastic. We get a good mixture of members and non-members, and we've definitely had some people join as a result of coming along to the virtual talks. And each session ends with a good number of interesting questions. So they're lively sessions. We've planned another interesting program for 2024, so there's plenty to look forward to. And pretty much um, that program is now um, all on Eventbrite for booking for next year. Um, there's a couple of things where we're still going to tweak titles and things, but we've, we've have got oh. we've found another yeah. great selection of speakers. We do need volunteers to help run the sessions. You just need a basic knowledge of Zoom to help with that. Uh, uh, Anka and I are planning to step down from the virtual talks team at the end of 2024. So we do hope there's going to be new people coming forward to help the program to continue. So just get in touch with us on the virtual talks email if you can help in any way. And even if you've just got suggestions of speakers as well, that's useful. But people who could actively get involved and help those sessions run would be particularly grateful. And just one last thing, uh, we started adding a donations option to the tickets on Eventbrite um, over the last few months. And we're just really grateful to those who do give a donation. You don't have to, but it's really, you know, we very much appreciate it if you do. Please contribute to the income of the LNHS and they're enabling us, for example, to pay for the Zoom account. So thank you very much if you have managed to give a donation to us. We're going to turn now to the ecology and entomology section. Hi, my name is Kieran. I'm the chair of the ecology and entomology section. For those who don't know, we cover vertebrates apart from birds and invertebrates, basically. Um, so I'm going to be short and sweet. Um, I just want to talk about a couple of things. So we've heard about the lack of use of the library. So we've been trying to combat that a little bit by having invertebrate study days at the museum. Uh, we've held them every other Sunday. Because we are limited by the amount of space, we, we manage them using a booking system. Uh, we have unfortunately had quite a lot of people booking and not turning up. So that has been problematic. Um, so I've had to overbook them in the hope that too many people don't turn up and it, it tends to fluctuate. But they've been really successful and really well received. It links the library to our section a lot better. And I've spoke to some of the other ecology and entomology members and we've agreed that between us, so rather than just me hosting all of them, we're going to host a fuller programme next year and run one per month. And I think we usually do them on the second Wednesday. So we do them on Wednesdays to link them with when the library is open. Um, that's the indoor aspect of what we do. Uh, we've done a range of field meetings, but I want to specifically talk about our field recorder days that we've run. So we've run them at Hogsmill Wood, as you can see in the picture here. Uh, Hounslow Heath, Tolworth Court Farm, uh, Chiswick House and Gardens. And I've got some more planned for next year. Um, and what we do on these events is rather than having kind of a, a walk that's led by a, a section member, we've been getting recorders together for all sorts of different groups within uh, from within ecology and entomology and recording all the wildlife that we can. So having a real focus on developing recording skills for newer members as well. And they've been really, really popular. Um, some of them had over 30 people on them. So really, really good. Uh, and yeah, like I said, we'll be doing more next year. Uh, if you want to know more about the what's been going on with individual taxonomic groups within the section, I recommend catching up with the Ecology and Entomology AGM uh, talk, which I'm going to put on YouTube over the next couple of days. Uh, but one highlight I wanted to pick out uh, is uh, from our Hemiptera, our true bug recorder. And we had a new species to Britain discovered in the London area during 2023, the plant hopper Calesia monoceros, which I've probably pronounced completely wrong, but I just thought that is uh, an amazing find, a completely new species to Britain. Uh, I unfortunately need to shoot now because I've got another meeting I need to go to. So I'll hand back to you, Maria. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to email me with them. Okay, thank you. Thank right. you, thanks, thanks, Kieran. Um, thank you for all your hard work. And I'm particularly appreciative of those um, Wednesday sessions. I think that's been a really good way to link together the Angela Mar use the Angela Marmot Centre facilities and also start the developing the use of the library as well. Is that Elliot Fruit, by the way? Is that Elliot in the photo, Elliot Newton? Yeah, because it's one of his sites. 
Perfect. So, yeah. Okay. I might just mention him then. So um, for people who don't know, we did, I think he, he, he's been mentioned in the annual report, but Elliot Newton is our new conservation <laughs> officer. Oh, and Elliot, you're here as well. So <laughs> that's not that. Yeah. Lovely. To, yeah. Thank you very much. So we can give you, give you a wave. Um, we're really delighted that you've um, taken over the role of conservation officer. Um, obviously, David Bevan, you've worked a little bit alongside, but he's you know, decided that it's time for him to retire, but we're really pleased that you've taken over and already started getting involved with various things. And it was great that we managed to visit one of your sites and do some work with you as well. So I don't think there's anything you wanted to, to say in terms of just saying hello and... Um, <clears throat> thanks, Marie. Yeah, well, it's just a pleasure to, to be, be take, take on the role. Um, still sort of finding my feet, I suppose, and how best to help, but it's been, it's been great to try and engage with various land managers after various walks to try and encourage some conservation outcomes from from some of the, the visits that the, 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 the society's been doing. Yeah, but, but look, looking forward to getting more involved next year as well. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with you. But thanks you're already for your contributions so far, which has been great. I'm going to turn next then to the botany um, section and over to you, George. Evening, everybody. Um, could you go back to the previous slide, please, Maria? Thank you. Th I put this in because um, it's got buildings in it. it. It's London. It's got the Thames in it. The flower in the foreground is, at the time, it was named Dianthus Carthusianorum. Um, so I can't remember what its English name is. But subsequently, it's been redetermined. If anybody, but I forgot what the new name is. So if anybody knows, do let me know. OK, go on to the next one then, please. Right, this is a, a brief summary of the annual report, most of which was composed by um, by John Agar and Mark Spencer. So I'll be summarising what they said with a few more bits put in. Um, the sections had a very, an interesting and varied year, the general flavour reflecting the recent recasting of the committee. Everyone's pulled their weight in running the group, and we're very grateful. The focus over the year has been on Mark Spencer's work on Axie Fight and Red Lists, and John Agar's programme of field meetings. Um, Saba Rockney has agreed to take on the job of Indoor Meeting Secretary, which is, we we're very pleased. We've had, it's been vacant for quite a while, and um, she's a very competent young lady. Um, Mark Spencer and uh, Paul Loss, Julia Stediakshuveti, I'm not quite sure if I pronounced that properly, I'm sure I haven't, I've done a lot of work with um, Andy Foy of Giggle to develop Axie Fight and Red Lists for the um, for the uh, Greater London and the Rare Plant Bridges for Middlesex. They're aimed at providing the framework for publication of the London Floralist. Um, um, Mark Spencer, we've had 31 field meetings during the year. Um, Mark Spencer led four of them joint with the BSBI at Victoria Park, Hackney Wick, Ram Rammy Marsh and Monk and Hadley Common. Um, Mario Macklin led eight meetings, a lot of it in cemeteries and the like. I don't know if that says something about him, but there we are. I'm sure he'll comment. Um, and um, Annie Chipchase and Sarah Lowe organised a series of fauna and flora recording events at the Hackney Tree Nursery. Um, Bettina Metcalf has also done quite a lot of meetings looking at trees in various places, a lot of them planted, but a, lot, a wide range of different species, and she's very knowledgeable about it, and, um, and we benefit a lot from her work. Um, Tim Rich uh, led a meeting in Hackney Tree Nursery um, based on dandelions. Um, and organised by, organised by John Agar. It was a valuable hands-on introduction to a very difficult group, of which there are about 250 species in the UK. Um, I have to say that most of them look the same to me. I can tell the difference between large ones and small ones, but um, and actually naming them and is is very, very difficult, and, 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 and Tim is very good at it. Um, and thanks go to all leaders of the meetings without which the society would be very much impoverished. Indoor meetings reflected the legacy of COVID, 
uh, they're all on Zoom, which I do find very convenient because I can sit in my armchair and uh, and participate. Uh, the tw the twenty two AGM was followed by a presentation by Tim Rich on the difficult plant problem, um, discussing the problems associated with the groups of microspecies such as dandelions and hawkweeds. And our dandelion meeting followed directly on from that um, from that talk. And over the year, Mark Spencer presented a series of talks on the different habitats in the London area, such as the Thames, wetlands and aquatic habitats, streets, railways and brown fields. We thank him for all the time and effort he puts into the society's activities. He's very articulate. Uh, we had a quiz in February, but no photo show. But, oh, pardon me, we do hope to have, um, uh, we, we have planned another quiz and a photo show uh, in the coming, in the first couple of months of next year. Thank you, Maria. That's a lot. Thank you, George. That's great. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone in the Botany Committee. It's, you know, it's a very lively, active committee, and we've had some really brilliant field meetings. And the dandelion um, ses training has to stand out for me. I don't know if I was any further forward at the end of it, but it was really interesting. I, I've enjoyed looking at the at dandelions and trying to figure them out. Thank you. Um, a couple of people just popped things in the chat. We do um, aim those field meetings really at adults. Um, if somebody comes along with um, a child, there would also have to be probably an older child who would be able to kind of to focus and find it of interest. They would obviously need to stay with them. Um, so they would be kind of still responsible for them. But if you've got sort of you know, older children that are interested in the natural world and want to come along and learn, then please, please do bring them along. I'm going to go now. Oh, and somebody else was asking about payments. We can't use Eventbrite as a way of paying for subscriptions, but get in touch with us and we'll see if we can work out some other way of you joining if you're having trouble with the, what, we, what we offer so far. I'm sure there's a way of working something out. Uh, now to the Hampstead Heath survey, and that's over to you, Liz. Oh, thanks, Maria. Uh, I'm Liz Andrew. I'm the chair of the Hampstead Heath survey. So on to the next one, please. Um, so very briefly, I've got too much written on here, quite honestly. I just wanted to thank um, everybody who's who's on the committee and who's done all the work. Um, we lost John Eggington um, this year, so we warmly thank him uh, for all the work that he's done in the past to get the thing running in the first place with Cat Duke, who was the chair before me. Um, and uh, and uh, it's very good that I've managed to see him on one or two of our field meetings that we've had subsequently. So last year we had um, uh, 13 public survey walks um, that were attended by an average of uh, 10 people. Uh, it varied a bit depending on the weather as much as anything else from about three or four to well over 20. And we had a number of new or notable species recorded, um, including Odontites vernus, the red Bartsia, uh, a first record um, in London uh, within a 10 kilometer radius, uh, three fungi, two fungi, sorry. Um, the really exciting one for me was the Fabulacea cloud opus, the orange pore cap, also known as the ping pong bat fungus, which was a first record for London as was also the Cyphella ferruginea, a very small uh, fungus that was found uh, on a, a dead tree trunk. Uh, we found a new uh, bryophyte to the, to the heath and only a second record in Middlesex, Ephemerum minutissimum, uh, which looked just like a little bit of slime uh, until we got it out and had a proper look at it. And there were also um, several spiders new to the heath and uh, a hairy dragonfly, which was seen on two occasions. And so we're hoping that that's going to be breeding and that we'll see it again next year. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, I just wanted to say briefly about the Millennial Flora Project. Um, Mike West mentioned that the City of London has provided a grant to LNHS, and that's for looking at the the, the flora that were originally identified um, back in the early uh, 2000s by uh, LNHS members um, who went out and recorded over 650 species of, of plants. 
uh, that were growing on the heath and the places where they were found. And this is just showing a map of the heath with uh, Prunus spinosa, the blackthorn, um, as it was then. Uh, and uh, so with the, I find these maps incredibly helpful in working out whether the plants are still in the same place or somewhere different. Um, and so we're updating uh, these records all the time and uh, hope to get the new spreadsheet and records out onto the website by the end of the project in about another six to months to a year's time. So uh, the things that we've been doing then, mapping the key flora from the original project, also looking at fungi and lichens. Uh, we do detailed surveys of meadows, heath and wood by something called the National Vegetation Classification. And uh, in this photo here, the group of volunteers um, looking at the uh, plants growing in a small area so that we can then get an idea of the um, uh, of the vegetation of that bit of grassland. And we've also started a project looking at the phenology of um, uh, various uh, uh, trees and shrubs and plants in different microclimates on the heath. Um, this year we've had two sets of volunteers going out on two different transects and we have a third transect uh, starting in January to cover the, the, the third part of the heath. And we're doing all of this in collaboration with the uh, charity Heath Hands who help with mapping the flora and the surveys and, and the weekly monitoring. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to say. If anybody's got any questions, I'm very happy to answer or put them in the chat or email me and uh, we can sort that out. Thank you very much, Liz. That's really great. It's exciting to see this that project really kind of developing and moving forward. So and the collaboration with Heath Hands, I think, has really enhanced the work as well. So thank you very much. That's great. I would um, just like to say thank you to Heath Hands as well, which somehow I forgot to do. Thank you. <laughs> That's fine. So very quickly, um, common survey, um, just got two sections left. I'm going to zip through this. Um, and this is basically saying we are having monthly Saturday field meetings. They're self-led and mostly they're attracting a few if not very large numbers and mostly local people. The National Trust Ranger, Ian Swinney, continued to play an active role in the management of the site and he showed uh, LAHS group around the site in July 2022, which is really enjoyable and informative. Sam Valenti has now taken over as Ranger and he's really keen to continue to work with the LNHS. But what we really need is a group of dedicated members who can visit that site regularly to carry on the survey work and establish a committee. So do get in touch if that's somewhat something that interests you, if you're particularly if you're sort of maybe southwest um, based where that site's a bit more accessible to you, because we'd really love to develop the work that's happening there as well. And now I'm going to turn to the London Bird Club and to you, Gahan. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gahan De Silva. I chair the ornithology section known as the London Bird Club. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I'll try and get through all of these at a brisk pace because I'm mindful that the advertised close-up play of the AGM bit was 7.30, so we are overrunning. Um, but I would like to start, uh, start uh, by saying a big thank you once again to all, all the post holders of uh, the London Bird Club, as well as the LNHS uh, and the other volunteers who helped to make the LNHS one of the most active societies of its kind. Uh, this includes uh, the, uh, the field meeting leaders who are not uh, post holders. Uh, it also includes the members who turn up and, and make it worthwhile for the field meeting leaders to run the events that we do uh, and also sponsors such as John Beaufoy Publishing. And uh, just running through the key points on the slide, in terms of uh, changes of personnel, we've got uh, Cecilia Derrick, who took on the role of secretary uh, and Instagram editor. Um, she, uh, she will also be the paper, papers editor on the editorial board uh, and the section rep uh, of the London Bird Club on council. Uh, Probably the, the most important thing the London Bird Club has been doing has been to build up the program of walks. Uh, there's more details on the next slide. We are arranging the order of 30 field meetings now across a 12 month span. Um, these are well attended. In terms of cross marketing, the London Bird Club, the Marleybone Birdwatching Society, MBS, and the RSPB Central London Local Group 
um, continue to cross market each other and work in collaboration um, uh, in promoting each other's events. The social media uh, has been active and the Bird Club Twitter master and Instagram uh, manager do what they can to uh, improve the social media footprint of the LNHS. The Twitter account is over 6,800 members and Instagram now has over a thousand members. On the talks, um, so this is a, a, a bit of an issue given the hybrid working model and all the central London uh, ornithological societies are, are still wrestling uh, with what to do next. Uh, because of the hybrid work uh, methods that a lot of officers have adopted, uh, no one is really sure whether to resume an indoor talks program. Uh, we are probably more likely to reconsider it if the right person comes along and preferably somebody who lives or works near Berghaus and uh, can get to meetings easily to do the, the meet and greet of the speakers. Uh, on the reading circle, it remains active and we have a number of journals where, which you can subscribe to, such as RDA Bird Life, Rich Birds, Dutch Birding, Ibis and Scottish Birds. Um, on the London Bird Report, we'll cover that on the next slide. In terms of finances, the income and expenses uh, remain modest and stable. And the Library Committee rep reports that we continue to acquire ornithological titles of the library. Next slide, please. Uh, so here I'm just uh, uh, showcasing uh, details of the of the of the walks. Um, based on a long run history of 55 uh, bird club walks, the average attendance is 13. But recently we're seeing around 20 plus attending. Uh, in fact, the attendance has been so positive that we're actually having to dial down on some of the social media publicity so that the groups uh, don't become too big. So this is a, a good problem to have. And it's interesting that uh, the numbers we are seeing now are even higher than pre-COVID levels. Uh, the number of species seen is an average of 40 species based on 55 walks. Uh, some sites can have as many as 70 species. A lot of people are actually surprised that you could go to a central London site such as Kensington Gardens and see 40 species. Uh, we also have uh, quite a few Americans joining our walks and, and they're again very presently surprised at how many species can be seen. Next slide, please. So the London Bird Report has been a very important publication of the LNHS now uh, sort of in terms of numbers of issues in the mid 80s. The uh, 2021 issue was published in May 2023 and the next issue LBR 2022 is due in May 2024. Uh, however, there are a number of vacancies uh, the chair of the editorial board remains vacant since Pete Lambert, who chatted for close to a decade, uh, retired. Uh, the slide is calling for a, a replacement for the uh, the writer of the Ornithological Review of the Year, which was uh, done by Nick Rutter for around a decade. But I'm pleased to say that John Walker has stepped forward since this uh, uh, slide went in. So uh, welcome to John Walker, who will be taking over that role. Uh, thank you to Sean Huggins, our Middlesex recorder, who's been very active with the Bird Club for perhaps a few decades. Um, uh, he's stepped down, so we're looking for a, a replacement recorder. We, we're also having uh, a few uh, key people retiring. So there are three main editors, Sadly Middleton, Ian Woodward, and Derek Coleman, who provided this slide. Uh, all of them will be uh, stepping down. Uh, after LBR 2022 comes out. So they have uh, issued a dire warning that the London Bird Report will not continue unless uh, replacement candidates are found. There is a wider discussion going on in terms of uh, if the LBR continues in, in what format will it continue? And there are issues with the sheer volume of data we receive. Uh, many ornithological clubs receive about 20,000 records a year. Uh, the LBR receive uh, over 200,000 records a year. So uh, there are issues to be uh, discussed and resolved. But the key thing is that we are looking uh, for more people to step up and 
uh, become involved with the London Bird Report editorial board. So if you're interested, uh, please do contact using this email and details or also on the website. Next slide, please. So on the assumption that the LBR will continue in one format or the other, uh, we will be looking for species accounts writers. And what you get is that you get a citable piece of work. So this is particularly useful for people who are looking to build up their conservation CV, but it's also a good way uh, for personal development to uh, improve your writing skills, your data analysis skills. So, you know, uh, uh, the old adage of uh, what you get is is what you give. Um, so that pretty much uh, wraps me up. Um, and my email is also on the uh, LNHS website. So if anybody is interested in uh, volunteering in any way, uh, please feel free, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much. Thank you Back very much. Maria. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Gahan. And again, nice to see how active you're being. I agree, it's a good problem to have that you're getting too many people coming to meetings. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. also pleased that John Walker stepped forward to do the um, review, the year, yearly review. I think that's re that's really important. Um, and, you, you know, depending on how the like how or if the London Bird Report continues and in what form, that, that kind of aspect of it, I think, will, you know, something that we want to continue to make sure that we produce and it's always of great interest. So thank you very much um, to everybody who's kind of contributed and just to see how active and busy our society is, it's great. Um, that draws us to a close. Our final thing on the agenda is any other business. So do pop your hand up if there is anything that you would like to mention. Um, but I'm, I know I'm conscious of kind of, of time. Um, do get in touch with us though, as, you, as Gahan says, all our details are on the website. So you can kind of email us at any time if there's anything that you would like to raise. Our next, our next AGM, we haven't booked in exactly the date yet, but it will be similar sort of time of the year, it will be the first uh, week in December, 2024. So I'm going to now um, ask somebody to stop the recording of the AGM.